Many Christians allow what people say about them to define, interpret, and explain them. As a Christian, we are not defined by what people say, but what God says about us. Because what God says is final. I want to ask you a question. And I hope you will understand me very well. Who do people say you are? Ask your neighbor, who do people say you are? What are people saying about you? Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor. <laughs> so is there anybody who can answer to say, uh, man of God, me, people are saying this about me. Is there anybody who can tell us an honest, an honest experience? What, what, stand up, let's hear from you. We have no time. Who do people say you are? And what are people saying about you? Stand up, you people who love crying. You hear what they're saying about me? Let us hear now. Let us hear from uh, our brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, man of God. People, when they see me, they will say, I do have money. And when I check my bank account and the pocket, I don't have that money. <laughs> okay, repeat that again. They have not here. People are saying what? People, when they see me, they will say, I do have money, even in my family. But when I look into the bank account and my pocket, I don't have you that don't have money. But they say you have money. But they say I do well, have Let money. us love for his honesty. Okay, let's hear another person. Good morning, man of God. Morning. Yeah, really, sometimes I used to be confused who I am, but when the people tell me who I am, sometimes I'm looking at the some point where they're saying, when I'm in the church, they used to say, we're a prophecy person. When I'm looking at myself, I, I see that thing is bigger than me. How, okay. they can, how they can say that? Okay. Are you listening to mom? So this is where we want to dwell today. Who do people say you are? This is where we want to dwell. And this shall take us to that Matthew 16, verse 13. And that John 7. That Matthew 16, Verse 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philip, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but what do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the power of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Are you listening to that? Are you listening to that? Amen. Who do people say you are? Some of you, you, I look at you, you are afraid to stand up. You don't want to talk to a man of God, you, you, you rather complain to people who cannot help you. Many people complain that people are saying this about me, they say, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, and everything. We wanted to hear now, we are in the presence of God. Because you normally discuss outside God's presence. Looking for solace, comfort from people. To say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Let's go also to that John 
17. Uh, no, not John 17. Yes, verse 10 to 12. John 7, verse 10 to 12. But after his brothers left for the festival. After his brothers left for the festival. That is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus also went. Jesus also went. Though secretly. Uh -huh. Staying out of public view. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Then the Jewish leaders tried to find him at the festival and kept asking if anyone had seen him. Verse 12. There was a lot of grumbling about him. There was a lot of what? Grumbling. Mm -hmm. About him among the crowds. Mm -hmm. Some argued, he is a good man. He is a good man. But others said, mm -hmm. he is nothing mm -hmm. but a fraud who deceives the people. Uh -huh. What are people saying about you? Who do people say you are? They say, some say he's a good man. Others say, no, he's a fraud. He deceived the people. Others say, he has demon power. He cast out demon by power of demon. He has the spirit of Beelzebub. This is people for you. Some say he's a good man. Others say he, he deceived the people. He's a fraud, a froster. Who do people say you are? And what are people saying about you? In life, it is not what people say or are saying about you that matters, but what God says. If you live your life according to the scriptures, I mean if you live every day of your life reading and obeying the word of God which is in the Bible, you are what God says you are. You have what God says you have. And you can do what God says you can do. Many Christians allow what people say about them to define, interpret, and explain them. As a Christian, we are not defined by what people say, but what God says about us. Because what God says is final. Tell never say what God say is final. What God say is final. It's final. But you hear people complaining. Did you hear what they're saying about me? Did you hear? What are they saying? Didn't you hear? <laughs> hey. Now, the question I want to ask you now. What is God saying about you now? A voice spoke from his excellent glory in Matthew 17, verse 5. Let us hear this voice from his excellent glory. Let's hear. Matthew 17, verse 5. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, mm -hmm. and a voice from the cloud said, mm -hmm. This is my dearly loved son. This is my dearly loved son. Who brings me great joy. Who brings me great joy. Listen to him. Listen to him. But what were they saying in John 7? He's a froster. He deceived the people. It is not what people say about you that matters, but what God says about you. But most of the time, we dwell on what people are saying about us. We cry. We complain. We murmur. We become bitter because of what people say. Meaning, you allow people to define you, Amen. interpret and explain. But we are not defined by what people say. 
if you live your life according to the scripture, if you live your daily life reading the Bible and obeying it, you are what God says you are. You have what God says you have. And you can do what God says you can do. Look, as a Christian, God's opinion matters. People may say all sorts of things about you. They may dent your image and your name. They may take away your reputation and prestige. They may take away your status. But there's one thing that human being cannot take from another human being. That is the grace and favor of God. Yeah. Ask Joseph in Genesis 39 and 40. He will tell you that his brothers took away his coat of many colors, which was symbolic. It was just representing who he is, but that was not the real thing. It was just a symbol. They dipped it in blood of animal, and they went to lie to the father to say, your son, your favorite son, has been eaten by animals. They gave him heart attack. A woman came again to lie about Joseph, he said, he tried to rape me, Potiphar's wife, which led Joseph to the prison. Amen. But even in the prison, the Bible says he found favor with the commander jailer. The grace of God was still in operation. He was interpreting dreams to the jailers. Amen. Amen. Widespread begin to move in the prison that there's something about this young man. When the king was in trouble, there was somebody in the prison who told me that I'll be out of prison and here I am saving you. I think he's the one to interpret what you dream. Look at the grace and favor. They could not take away or stain the grace and favor of God upon Joseph. Our enemies, our competitors, our antagonists, I mean our rivals, will not want to leave our names unsoiled, unstained, or untarnished. Tell the say, our enemies, our antagonists, our competitors, our rivals, will not want to leave our names without staining it, soiling it, or tarnishing it. That is how it is. Winners, champions, I mean conquerors, have had their names soiled, stained, and tarnished. Why? Because what is good in us is the cause of jealousy, Amen. envy, hatred, and name calling. Tell them, I say, what is good in you? What is good in you is the cause of envy, jealousy, hatred, name calling, and the likes. Where have you seen somebody fighting a street kid? Gossiping about street kid, where have you seen that? No, it is what is good in you that causes hatred, jealousy, name calling. You will never hear people sitting fighting a street kid in town. Every day discussing street kid. Where have you seen that? Unless you are a mentor.
unless you have mental problem. But under normal circumstances, you will never. But if there is something good in you, all these things will come. Hatred, jealousy, name calling. Some will say you are good. Some will say you are a froster. If you say something is, let it be revealed to you by Heavenly Father. Tell about say when you say somebody is, make sure it is revealed to you by Heavenly Father. That's all. Because Jesus asked them, who do people say I am? What do you say I am? Simon said, you are the son of the living God. He said, Simon, this thing was not revealed to you by a human being. It was by my father in heaven. From now on, you are Peter, meaning rock. I will build my church upon this rock. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, I give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here will be lost. The people you are saying they are, what is your reward? If you say somebody is, what is your reward then? Peter was rewarded with the keys of the kingdom. He was given a new name which the church will be established. That is as a reward. Look at, look at our problem. You keep saying this is this, is this. Where did you get it? If you get it from Heavenly Father, it will come with a reward. If you say I'm a demon, I'm fake, you must be rewarded if it's from heaven. Father, there is reward come. As you are busy telling people, he's this. If it's from heaven, whether it's a, what you are saying is good thing or is bad thing, if it's from there, you will be given reward yourself because it was revealed to you. But most times, what we say is what we hear from other people about others. That is a, the, the, the most weakest of Christian challenge. Christians are so weak. What they say is not what is revealed to them by Father. It's what they hear from other people. Not God telling you, listen to the voice from his excellent role. This is my beloved son, my loving son, who do things that brings joy to me. Listen to him. While others were saying, ah, he's a froster, this one. Deceiving people. Like, listen to the voice of, from glory. Excellent glory. Let me tell you something. Out of many things you know, I want you to point your focus on this one. The Bible says, the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Psalm 63, verse 11. Read it for us. Psalm 63, verse 11. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear to tell the truth will praise him, while liars will be silenced. The Bible says the mouth of those who speak lies will be silenced, that is, will be stopped. This means the only thing that can stop a lie is truth. And Jesus is the truth, and the devil is a liar. Amen. So are his children. Amen. Tell her never say, the only thing that can stop a lie is the truth. Jesus is the truth, and the devil is a liar. Say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Let 
me tell you something. There's something Christians are missing. There's something Christians have been missing for many years now. As a child of God, any trap, any plot, any evil discussion held against you, it is for your advancement. Genesis 50, verse 20. Let us hear what he say. Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me. You intended to harm me, to destroy me. But God intended it all for good. God turned it all for my good. He brought me to this position. He now promoting, promoted me to this position. So I could save the lives of many people. So that I can save the lives of many people. This is Joseph. Any plot, any trap, anywhere you are, is it a working place, your business, your community, if you are a child of God, you need to know this and believe it, that any evil discussion held against me as a child of God, it is for my advancement. Read what Joseph said to them. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. What enemy meant for evil, all this need around for my around. The enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. That is it. You hear Christian complaining, men of God, in my office day. <laughs> men of God, my business, my business, my business. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> what is wrong, Mama? If you are a child of God, any plot, any trap, any evil held against you, by your enemy, it is for your advancement. Yeah. It is for your promotion. Yeah. You may not see it at the time because the process is painful. But if you hold on to your confession of faith, believing and trusting God, you will see that this was for my God. This was for my God. This was for my good. This is the song we sing. Rejoice in your trials. Rejoice in your trials. I know they are painful. There's no good trial. Tell me about say there's no good trial. No, all are painful, but are for my advancement. So each time you face a trial, a challenge, know this. Promotion is just on the way. That is it. It's time. Are you listening? It's time. Even December, November, our children know, oh my God, here comes the exam. That discomfort period of time. But those who will commit this, after the results come out, oh my God, look at how they enjoy their Christmas. How they enjoy their holiday. Each time you face challenges, I don't care what form. If you're a child of God, promotion is coming. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. It's just like that. You need to know this as a Christian. Any form. Listen, winners in life. I mean champions and conquerors 
are not inaugurated, are not crowned or even promoted for desiring to be. They are inaugurated, crowned, and promoted because they have defeated their enemy. Tell your neighbor, say, champions, champions. Winners, winners, conquerors, are not inaugurated, crowned, promoted for desiring to be. They are crowned, inaugurated, and promoted because they've defeated their enemy. That is it. Things may be going good in my life. Things may be going good in my ministry, in, in the home, in the marriage. Everywhere things are going good. But the moment there's some issue that take my peace, I know, oh my God, here comes the time of promotion. Amen. And my attitude during that time determines the outcome. If I'm positive in that pain, and I still believe that God, you will take me out of this, and I believe it, that will determine the outcome. Because our confession gives us possession. They may stain your name, dent your image, take away your prestige, your status, but they can't take away the grace and favor of God upon your life. That is it. It is easy to dent a name. There's nothing is as easy as that. You know why it's so easy? You just cook story. It's so easy to destroy the name of a person, the image of a person, even to remove you from a manager to, to or director, whatever. It's so easy to do that. You just cook story. You just fabricate. You just lie. Satan will help you. But to stain the integrity, I mean, to stain the grace, the favor, nobody can do that upon you. Nobody. Nobody. You can take away my car, take away my home, you, you can, can never, never take, take my faith in the Lord. Sing it as it is, but when it comes, you can't take away my faith in the Lord. You can't take away the grace of God. You can't take away the favor of God upon my life. Let's go. You can take away my hope. Take away. Take away my car. Take away. But you can never take the grace of the Lord. You can take away my Whatever it may be. Oh. 
can take away my job. My position. Take away my position. But you can never take the grace of the Lord. Take me to prison And you can never take the grace of the Lord You can take away my freedom Wherever it may be Take away my Lord You can take away my freedom Take me to prison But you can never of the Lord, you can take away my clothes, wherever they might be, my Lord, you can take away my clothes, take away my shoes, but you can never take the grace of the Lord. is a position of a genuine Christian. Why are we crying? Ask your neighbor, why are you crying? As a Christian, as a child of God, why are you complaining? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at David as a king. After he made a mistake with somebody's wife, the only thing he asked God, he said, don't take your spirit away from me. He never begged that, don't remove me as a king. Don't take me out of the palace. No, he knew that what makes us to be who we are, it is the grace of God. And these are the things we miss. Tell and never say, what makes you to be who you are? You are a manager, supervisor, whatever you are. What makes you to be that? It is the grace of God. And this is what the enemy misses. You are what you are by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. So even whatever this position we receive, the name, Apostle, I'm Apostle by the grace of God. So you, you can taint my name as Apostle, dent it, destroy my image, take away my prestige. But if the grace is still with me, you are a loser. Yeah. You're a loser. Even the position you occupy, it, it is the grace of God. Yeah. When it's taken, why are you crying? We should only cry when the grace is taken. Because this grace is able to open closed doors. When they, this one shut, the grace open another one. When they take this one, the grace bring better one. That is it. Do you see the grace of God? This is the grace of God. When they take away your job, 
Grace gives you a better job. They take away your position. Grace gives you a higher position. It's just like that. When evil is meant against you, what dominates and begins to work in your life is grace. To sustain you during trial. It is the Holy Spirit that sustains Jesus during trial, crucifixion. It was not easy. He said, Lord, take away this cup from me. It is the grace of God that sustains Jesus during crucifixion. That's it. Why are you crying? A great lesson here is never murmur or complain in the hive of your adversities. Tell never say never murmur, complain, grumble in the hive of your adversities. Rejoice! Because when evil happen, injustice happen, lying happen, it's for your advancement. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all. So look at the many things. It doesn't matter what happened to you. If there's anything you need to protect, it's a grace. If there's anything you know that this one, yeah, nobody can touch it. It's grace of God. That's it. May God bless his word in your heart. Amen. May he give you the grace not only to be a hearer but the doer of his word. Amen. May his word find a place in your heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Who do people say you are?